Hi and welcome back to another Explain video. Um, my name is Maddie and I'm a doctor working in the UK. In today's video we're going to be looking at My Hero Academia's All Might. United So today we're going to be analysing All Might's injury, the one in which he sustained when fighting one for all, and we're going to be explaining the effects of starvation on his body. Now pretty early on in Season 1 we find out that All Might is in fact hiding behind a facade of a muscular physique. Below that he actually has an emaciated body where he's very skinny and has lost a lot of his weight, and this is as a result of damage which he sustained to his stomach when fighting all for one. Now All Might goes on to say that he's had several operations on this and it is irreversible and as a result he's effectively starving to death. But how much longer can his body go on like this? And we have to assume not much longer as he's had to pass on his power to Midoriya. Now if we looked at a typical 70 kilo average man, we know that he has enough stored calories within his body to last him for at least one to three months. But we don't know how All Might compares to an average man, um, but what we do know is that at the end of season one when All Might's fighting Nomu, um, he makes a statement that it took him 300 punches to defeat Nomu, whereas when he was at his peak it would have taken five. So he's effectively one sixtieth of the strength that he was when he was at his peak. So why is all this happening? Why is he losing so much power? Well, the body needs the nutrients in food to survive. It uses protein, carbohydrates and fats, as well as vitamins and minerals to renew cells and fuel vital bodily processes. Without food, the body starts to use its own tissue as fuel, but it can only do this for so long. Now, scientists aren't exactly sure how long the human body can go without food, and it's not an experiment that they can ethically perform, allowing people to get to the brink of death just to see what the outcome would be. The best indication that researchers have is by looking at case studies of where people have gone on hunger strike, um, and there's a few cases that we can use as examples. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with the American illusionist David Blaine, who spent 44 days in 2003 suspended in a glass box by the River Thames in London, and he did this all without food. Now similarly, he lost a dramatic amount of weight, which took his body some time to recover. A second case is that of Bobby Sands, who was portrayed in the movie Hunger by Michael Fassbender which follows the story of a character going on hunger strike whilst imprisoned in Northern Ireland in 1981. So clearly, looking at these two cases, there must be some factors that affect your survival. So the factors that might impact your survival are things such as your age, sex, your body size, fitness, general health, and your general activity level. Interestingly, researchers describe that one's mental state can also play an impact on how long you survive. People can go into what's called flight or fight mode where adrenaline surges through their body. Now these surges in adrenaline can be really important with how people survive um, as not everyone responds to life-threatening um, scenarios in the same way. In disastrous scenarios personalities are really important whereas some people might catastrophize and lose hope others are more hopeful and more resourceful hope has probably got a key role to play in survival which explains why all might is still around <laughs> But how does starvation affect the body? So starting with the cardiovascular system, to compensate for the lack of nutrition or food, the body begins to break down its own tissues as fuel. Now, it doesn't really discriminate what tissues it does this to, so that includes muscle, fat, and even your bone. And one of the biggest muscles and essential muscles we know is the heart. 
the pulse and blood pressure drop because the heart does not have the fuel that it needs to pump blood around the body as efficiently as normal. This inefficient pumping can lead to heart failure. Next, the gastrointestinal system. Food restriction interferes with how the stomach digests food and how it empties itself. Now this can go on to cause a number of symptoms such as abdominal bloating, stomach pain, vomiting, nausea, fluctuations in your blood sugar levels, as well as bacterial infections. Next, looking at the central nervous system or the brain. Starvation can affect the brain, which consumes up to one-fifth of the body's energy. Depriving the brain of energy can result in all number of symptoms, um, and these can spread from things like poor concentration levels, poor memory, difficulties with sleeping. And combined together, all of these factors can begin to affect someone's personality and give rise to behavioural changes from what that person used to be like. And then lastly, we're looking at the hormonal system, otherwise known as the endocrine system of the body. And so this is the body's machine for producing hormones such as testosterone in men or estrogen in women, and you need both cholesterol and fat to produce these. Now, if you have a deficiency in any one of these hormones, your body will begin to change the way it functions. So your core body temperature will go down, which could lead to things like hypothermia. Your metabolic rate would reduce also, and the strength of your bones would also decrease, leading to things like osteoporosis. Now, when you take a step back and look at all of the systems, you can begin to see the type of impact it's having on the body in general. And these are probably some of the changes that All Might is going through. Now, as the episodes go on, we begin to see the impact that this is having on All Might's body. We've seen, for example, blood coming out of his mouth at times, which can sometimes occur when the liver begins to fail. We've also seen that the amount of time that he can spend in his hero form is also reducing, which may be as a result of the weakness of both his heart as well as his metabolic rate being able to keep up with that output. So, is there any hope for him? Well, in medicine, we can give patients nutrition in various different ways. And there are some scenarios where giving oral nutrition might not be the best option for our patients. For example, patients who are undergoing throat or esophagus surgery. In such patients, the, the options could be either total parenteral nutrition, which involves delivering nutrition through um, an IV line, and typically that goes in one of the blood vessels up in the neck, or something like a PEG tube or a PEG tube, where it's a tube that goes into the stomach or bypasses the stomach to deliver nutrition that way. But we haven't really seen My Hero Academia talk about this in any way. So what are All Might's chances? So it's very difficult to compare All Might to an average man and what an average man could survive as he is the number one hero. And he's probably hope personified. So as we said earlier, personalities can impact your survival. So and from my professional point of view, I would say it's probably not much longer if he's now a 60th of what he was. But then again, there is such a thing as anime magic, and uh, he may go on to survive another couple of seasons. Okay, so I hope you found today's video enjoyable um, and informative. Um, if you did like this video, please consider giving us a like and subscribing down below. And you might also want to check out another couple of videos that I've got on my channel, breaking down other popular anime. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Sarabada, one for all.